the perfect camera for a professional well possibly not what you think i'm referring to the sony rx1 in this case um, if you're not interested in sony don't check out immediately because this could apply equally well to the fuji x100 or to the leica q3 uh, i'm just using this sony rx1 as an example i see that the little tabs are rattling on it here so I hope that doesn't intrude too much what do i mean when i say that this is the ideal camera for a professional I don't mean that it's the ideal camera for a professional to use for their work purposes, for their professional photography or professional videography. I mean that it's a great everyday camera. And perhaps as a professional, you do so much with your camera at work um, that you're not as keen to go out and photograph. But having a small camera that's easy to carry, easy to use, everywhere you go can revitalize that interest in photography that maybe is lost because you do so much professional work. I do apologize for these little tabs rattling away as I speak. For my business, I use two cameras. I have a Sony A1, um, this is it here, with um, a 35 millimeter prime lens on it at the moment. And you can see that it's really pretty big in comparison to the the tiny little rx1 it's not only big but it's really heavy and the other camera that i use is a sony a7s3 and this is it with the 70 with the 24 to 70 lens on it and you can see that it's absolutely huge and here it is um, just beside the rx1 so the main reason that i was keen to get this rx1 is because of the size and the weight of the cameras it just didn't appeal to me carrying my a1 around to do some street photography or even more so in terms of travel photography it's nice to have something light that just doesn't become cumbersome that doesn't get in the way that you can take out with you and it's not an added burden to carry it around and perhaps also you're not as worried about damaging it or losing it because your business depends on it or because it's an expensive camera and the other reason is that i use those two cameras every day for my work and therefore it's not such an exciting thing to be using them for my hobby and be going out to shoot street photography with them uh, or travel or landscape whatever it happens to be but to use this little camera is really something that is quite interesting and different and exciting so i've picked this um, sony rx1 it's quite an old camera old in the sense that it's been around for over eight years now and sony haven't updated it in that time there were previous versions there was an rx1 then there was an rx1r and this is the rx1r mark ii so it is though a great camera uh, still even in 2024 coming into 2025 it's still a great camera it has a superb full frame sensor that is 42 megapixels so it's a backside illuminated sensor and produces really high quality it's pretty good in terms of low light performance and low noise in that situation it has an absolutely amazing lens which is this carl zeiss sonar 35 millimeter f2 lens um, and that is an absolute delight to use the lens was designed specifically for this camera and for this sensor it's a fixed lens it doesn't um it doesn't come off the camera you can't change the lenses and that's another thing that really appeals to me about this situation and that is that the limitation of being restricted to a 35 millimeter lens really i think actually accentuates your creativity it causes you to move around and to look for different angles that you're going to be able to compose your shot the way you want it to rather than simply turning the zoom dial on your lens and uh, and zooming to whatever you want so the 35 millimeter i think is a great option and following this one 
I'm going to produce another video that justifies why I think 35 millimeter is the perfect full frame lens for general purpose use. Some people prefer 24, 28. I regard those as wide angles. Other people prefer a 50 millimeter because it's closest to the perspective that you get from the human eye. And, um, and, I, and I get that, but I do find 50 millimeter a bit restrictive. So if you're interested in why I think that 35 millimeter is the perfect focal length for a general purpose street photography, travel photography, maybe even landscape to some point, although I do appreciate a wide angle lens is, is a good thing for landscape. But if you want to see my views on that, then subscribe to the channel and I'll cover that in a subsequent video. Now, I mentioned that I haven't had an opportunity to try out this camera yet, and I've got some plans to do that over the next couple of weeks. And um, in order to uh, to give a bit of purpose and a bit of structure to that, I bought two books. One is a set of walks that you can do from almost every station on the Elizabeth Line. The Elizabeth Line is a new train and underground route that goes right through from Reading on the west side of London right through to Stratford and to Abbey Wood on the east side of London and, and it calls at significant stations along the way as you go through London. So there's a lot of interest along the Elizabeth Line and um, the book contains uh, walks. Um, that you can do from many of those stations. And the other book is called Secret London, and it's about lesser known venues, places, areas in London that you can use for general purposes of tourism, I guess, if, you, if you're a tourist. But for me, as a photographer, they're interesting places that I can go and do some street photography in London. So I plan to visit many of those places. And again, if you're interested in seeing the results of my street photography and experiences in those places, then please subscribe to the channel and, um, and that will be covered in future videos. So just to summarize, I think that whether you're a professional or not, using your main camera all the time is not always ideal. Depends, of course, what your main camera is, but if it's a larger and more capable camera, it's likely to be heavier and bigger and not something that you're going to carry all the time with you. So I think having what I would call an everyday camera, something that you will carry with you, is of real advantage. And as I say, there are three cameras that are in my head that fit this category really well, and those are... The, this one itself, the RX1R Mark II, there is the Fujifilm X100, which is now on Mark VI and which is really hard to find. It's so popular and um, it even sells secondhand sometimes for more than the list price. And there's also the Leica Q3, which is um, quite expensive, but they all have a similarity between them. Uh, and um, the one that I've picked anyway is the RX1R and I think um, I'm looking forward to being out and about shooting with it. I also have a trip to New York coming up fairly soon so I'll be uh, really looking forward to seeing how the RX1R does in New York and how the 35mm lens manages for street photography in New York. It's a lot of tall buildings, a lot of high rise buildings in New York, as you know, um, and maybe 35 isn't enough to fit them all in. Maybe I'll have to resort to stitching some images together in a, in a pano style, but we'll see how it is. And if you're interested in the video of my experiences in New York, then subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.